My opinion about the health education or the sex ed education programs in schools, um, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Um, for example, the state mandate is that sex education begins, comprehensive education begins in fifth grade. Fifth grade, you learn about the body. Sixth grade, you learn about reproduction. By seventh, eighth grade, you're supposed to be learning about STDs, HIV, prevention. I talk mainly to sophomores in every school I go to. Because I'll ask the, ca the cast um, at the beginning, what does chlamydia do? What are the four symptoms of chlamydia for a man? What are the, four, the two symptoms for a woman? And nobody can tell me these things. And I'll ask, well, did anybody go to your school and talk to you about this stuff when you were in grammar school or junior high? And, and a lot of people just say no. Some people say yeah, but it was all about abstinence, but they didn't teach us about the symptoms. And then I will come back and ask, well, as a sophomore, do you guys have friends who are sexually active? Hands go up. Freshman year, hands go up. Did you guys know people sexually active in eighth and seventh grade? Hands go up. Even in sixth and fifth grade, I've dealt with kids. You know, they, they know people sexually active in fifth and sixth grade. You know, and if you're thinking about in sixth grade, this is a year before the education begins, and they have no education. By the time they hit seventh and eighth grade, they have no education. And yet, by the time they're a sophomore or freshman, they're sexually active left and right, and yet they don't know what to look for in their partner's body or in their own body. You know, abstinence works if you choose it. I don't deny it. However, if it's not chosen, then what do you do? You know, kids need to be fully informed about what's the dangers out there when they're dating and what they're doing and what they're not going to do. And it, 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 it's very disturbing because, you know, it, it just seems to just be getting worse. Uh, the ST rates are constantly climbing. In 2008, a report came out from the CDC that one out of four teenage girls in this country has a sexually transmitted disease. That's about 3.2 million young women. Now that's for women, but the thing is though, if you think about for every one guy, there's one girl, for every one girl, there's one guy, you're actually talking <clears throat> about maybe 6.4 million teens with an STD in this country. And then in one year, in a year and a half, November 17, 2009, the CDC then reports 19 million new cases of STDs Half of those, 9.5 between 15 to 24. And yet we can't talk about this stuff. You know, kids are having sex. Granted, the pregnancy rate has dropped. That doesn't mean that they're not having sex. Maybe they're being a little bit more cautious, you know, but something is, it, something's not right. And it's, it's very disturbing because these are our kids, these are our future. And what kind of future they have if some of these STDs kill you and they're gone, so. It, it needs a lot of work. It needs to be open-minded. It needs to be willing to talk and have frank discussions with kids. I think with a lot of students, they're kind of surprised about what they see. Um, I show them stats from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, in terms of their numbers and their infection rates, and they kind of look at me like you're kidding. And I tell them, you know, I don't make this stuff up. This is the government reporting. And like one of the things I do, um, I show the infection rate over a four, I think a three year span, or four year span, from 2004 up to 2007. Okay, and I don't have the most, the, the, new, the newest numbers aren't out yet, and that, that's the government. But like, in 2004 there was 36,000 cases of HIV infection. In 2005, it jumped up to almost 40,000. In 2006, it jumped up to 46,000. In 2007, it jumped up to 54,000. 4,000 one year, 6,000 the next, 8,000 the following year. Each and every year, those numbers climb. And it's a factor by about 2,000 more cases. And the kids look at me like, really? I go, well, this is you. This is what you're choosing to do. No one forces you to have sex. No one forces you to use drugs. This is something you choose to do, yet you don't know your partner's status. So they kind of like, whoa, that's, that's, that's scary. I go, what's even scarier that these are people who chose to take a test. You know, you can take technically, statistically, people say you can take 10 people for HIV positive and two would know their status. So that 54,000 is basically 20% that know. Where is the other 80%? What are they doing and who are they doing it with? So the number's much bigger. And then what I do is I show them cases of AIDS and how those numbers are way higher. And what I tell them is that it takes on average 8 to 12 years from infection until a person gets an AIDS diagnosis. So that 16-year-old, by the time they find out something is wrong, if they never got tested, they're the 26-year-old adult. For example, in 2007, 54,000 cases of HIV between 13 to 24. That same year, cases of AIDS, it was uh, 300, for cases of AIDS between 25 to 34, it was 
328,000 plus cases of AIDS. When did that group become HIV infected? Go backwards in time and that's when the behavior occurred. I think the first thing that needs to happen is that a school needs to get parent involvement. And not so much in that, oh, what we're going to approve and not approve, more so educating the parents on what is HIV, STDs, educating the parents on how to talk with their kids about it. So there has to be something of, of a responsibility given to the parents that they are educated, that they learn, and that they're willing, and, and, and the school is willing to kind of back that up. I mean, that, that's what I see. I see that being the problem a lot of times is that there's not enough support for the school to make a decision, considering the fact a lot of times with these parents, they don't make a decision. I've been in schools where parents just don't care. I mean, a school, a lot of schools I've, I've dealt with over the years, the school is a daycare center for their kids. And you see the behavior of the kids showing it. And then after school, the kid, you know, when does the kid come home? Five, six, seven o'clock. So they're out there doing whatever they want. You know, it, it surprises me as some schools I go to, kids go without book bags, pencils, pens, or paper. And what do you expect the behavior is going to be when they leave school? You know, they don't know any better because what they see is what their friends do and they just follow by example. You know, so there has to be more accountability and, and more willingness to, to take a stand and saying, hey, this is what we're going to do.